In the previous video, we learned about the combined gas law. Now, the combined gas law is good if we have a constant number of moles of gas, meaning we don't have anything added or removed, and we're essentially changing one of the other variables of pressure, volume, or temperature. So for any set of changing conditions for the same gas system, we use the combined gas law, where it shows an inverse relationship between pressure and volume, but a direct relationship between pressure and temperature and volume and temperature. So for changing conditions, this is the gas law that we use. However, if we're talking about static conditions where we're just trying to describe a gaseous system, we'd use the ideal gas law, which is listed right here, also known as Pivnert. So Pivnert, P stands for vol pressure, V stands for volume, N, you probably wouldn't predict this, but it stands for the number of moles. M already represents mass, so it was taken. N is the best we could get. R is some constant, and T represents the temperature. Okay, now this, just like the other equation, shows you the relationships that are present. Two variables next to each other are going to have an inverse relationship like pressure and volume. Two uh, variables on opposite sides of the equal sign, which effectively puts one in the denominator, like temperature related to those two would be a direct relationship. Also, if you increase the number of moles, well, if you're, everything else stays constant, you're going to be having more collisions with the walls of the container. Your pressure would go up if you increase the number of moles and pressure stayed constant and it's allowed to expand, the more gas you put into a balloon, the bigger it gets. So it shows all the relationships present. Now, R is a constant, and that constant can change. It doesn't change, but we, the way we describe it can change depending on how we describe pressure. And we've already learned there's a bunch of different ways to do that. The three we'll focus on in this video are kilopascals, atmospheres, and millimeters of mercury, since those are the three most common we use in this class. So knowing that one mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 liters, we can calculate R from that. So if we say that standard temperature, 273 Kelvin, and say the standard pressure is one atmosphere. Given that, those pieces of information, we have a pressure, a volume, and we're gonna assume one mole of any gas, and a temperature. So if the pressure is listed in atmospheres, plugging all of these values in, one atmosphere times 22.4 liters, one mole, 273 Kelvin, we would get a value for R of 0.0821 atmospheres times liters per mole Kelvin. If we were describing the R value in kilopascals, you plug in, you know, an STP, you'd have 101.32 kPa, our value would change to 8.31. And for millimeters of mercury, again, just plug in 760 millimeters of mercury for the pressure. And so these values stay the same though. So like if we're describing a gas system uh, in kilopascals, this is gonna be R all the time, you don't change it. If you were describing it in atmospheres, it would be 0.0821, and if it were in millimeters of mercury, it would be 62.4. Um, that would be the value for R. Now, the ideal gas law is very useful. I just used it to calculate R right here, just to show the relationship there. But we're gonna use this anytime you need to find the number of moles, which we'll have to do for a bunch of different types of calculations. Well, whenever you're doing gas stoichiometry, anytime you're doing stoichiometry, Everything reacts in mole ratio, so you have to get to moles. So we can use this to solve for the number of moles. Whenever we're finding gas density, well, you can figure if you know the volume, you have to figure how many moles you have present, and then from that you can figure how much something weighs. Density is the mass divided by the volume, so you can use this equation to get that. And you can also calculate the molar mass from this equation. So this is very useful for you guys in this unit, and then you can calculate a whole bunch of things from it. And when all else fails in life, go to moles.